Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a teamer Iluna Apex of Wishes Mutate Ramp deck. Iluna being a 5 mana 6-6 six, six legendary beast elemental dinosaur with flying and trample, mutates for 6 mana and whenever this creature mutates exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card and put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand. And then we also have the Auspicious Sterix, which is pretty similar to Iluna, as a 5 mana 6-6 six, six Elk Beast, and mutates for 6 mana, and whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated, and put those permanents onto the battlefield. So unlike Iluna, the Sterix can hit lands, but it can also potentially hit way more permanents than Iluna, whereas Iluna only hits one card. So both of these cards reward us for mutating a bunch onto the same creatures, kind of putting all your eggs into one basket, but the payoff is pretty huge. And what are we trying to cheat into play with Sterix and Iluna? Well, we've got three copies of Andre's Forerunners as an 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven boar with Vigilance, Trample and Haste. And when the Forerunners enters a battlefield, other creatures we control get plus 2, plus 2, Vigilance and Trample until end of turn, which is usually enough to end the game on the spot. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Of course, we are also an all-creature deck, so we get to play Umori, the Collector, as our companion, as a 4-mana four 4-5 four that makes all our creatures one cheaper. And then at 1-mana, we've got some cheap ramp with the Arboreal Grazer to put an extra land in play alongside 27 lands. Then we've got the full playset of Polywalk Symbiote as a 2-mana 1-3 that makes playing mutate creatures one cheaper, both hard casting them or mutating them. And whenever we cast a creature with mutate, we get to draw a card and then discard a card, so we can get rid of lands in the late game and look for more action. And we also have the full playset of Paradise Root as a 2-mana two 2-1 two that can help us ramp, and also has Hexproof as long as it's untapped, which makes it a safe haven for all those mutate stacks, so we don't uh, run into any removal spells. Then at 3 mana we can also potentially mutate the Migratory Greathorn, which lets us search up an extra basic land whenever we mutate it. We've got the Parcel Beast that mutates for 2 mana and can also help us gain card advantage and ramp by putting lands into play. And then two copies of Gem Racer, which can mutate for 3 mana and is a 4-4 Reach Trampler. And when this mutates, we get to destroy an artifact or enchantment an opponent controls, so it gives us some answers there as well. Then at 5 mana we had our Styrix and Iluna, which we're usually trying to mutate. And then the three Andres Forerunners. And then a mana base, we've got lots of basics, so we can search them up with a Great Horn. And then uh, four copies of the Catria Triome, if we every now and then want to hard cast Iluna instead of mutating it and then we can also be cycled in late game. We've got four breeding pool, and then ten forests, six islands, one mountain that we can also search up with the Great Horn to get us red mana for Iluna, and then two copies of Castle Garenbrick, which can also help us ramp into the more expensive creatures in this deck. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck. We've got some early ramp with Paradise Roots, we've got our Styrix, hoping to find more mutate cards. can play turn 3 Umori if we want to. And we are up against the Boros Cycling deck. Turn 2 Rescure. Let's play Umori. And then next turn we can maybe start mutating. Double rescuers, so your opponent's gonna get to make a ton of tokens. So the trample on the foreigners is gonna be pretty key, or the flying on Iluna. Symbiotes can also be played. And then I guess we'll start uh, mutating the Sterix here. And then probably don't need Paradise Root anymore. Alright, so we've got our Sterix in play. Opponent's gonna have a hard time killing the Sterix. And next turn we get to kind of go off with two Symbiotes to find more Mutate cards.
We'll go for blood kills one of the symbiotes. Sure. All right, so we didn't quite uh, hit what we were hoping for. Don't really want to attack with the Sterix, but I guess Umori could attack. And I'll keep land in hand to discard to the Symbiotes. Opponent cycles a bunch. Castle doesn't do us any favors. Six. Am I willing to trade off the Starex here? Not really. We'll just send in Omori once again. But uh, we're getting to the point where Zenith Flare kills us pretty soon. Lots of cycling. Last turn our opponent also didn't cycle in my turn, so they're definitely digging for something. Maybe they just wanted to hit their land drop last turn. Alright, so we've got almost 20 cyclers in graveyard here. Parcel beasts. Cycle the Triome. And I guess we'll attack with Umori. And then end of turn I can still use the Sterix if we're not dead. Yeah, I'm not gonna tap it now since I could just Zenith Flare it once I tap it, which doesn't seem worth it. Gotta try and hit Andre's Foreigners here. I maybe should activate the uh, other Parcel Beast in response, so I have a card in hand to discard. So let's go full control here and attempt to activate our response. Alright, so we've got Iluna in hand. There's a Forerunners. At this point, I don't even know if Iluna's better than a Forerunner, since mutating on Sterix is pretty likely finding me another one anyway. So, let's discard it. Ooh, another Sterix gotta be better than Iluna at this point.
Don't have a ton of cards left in library. Only get to keep one Iluna. And there's two Forerunners. Alright. Let's see if this is enough. Of course, our opponent will have a Zenith Flare in hand, most likely. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Well, it took a while to eventually get the engine rolling, but once we did, it was pretty sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing Merfolk Secret Keeper. And a Yoked Ox. Alright, so this has to be a Hotly High Alert deck, which is gonna deliver the beatdown next turn. So, what's my play? Even a 2-4 doesn't block these once they play High Alert or Hotly. So I'm probably better off just playing Paradise Druids. And then next turn Umori is a decent blocker at least. And there's a High Alert. And do I want to chump with a Grazer now? I guess I can take 8 and chump next turn. I land is good. So I can use Castle. And then mutate Sterex onto Grazer. Hit a land. We'll play defense. And then next turn we can mutate Iluna. Banishing Light, sadly. Gets rid of our Sterex, so we're still taking 8. Alright, decisions, decisions. I guess I can mutate Iluna. This is double blue, so this will be tapped. So that doesn't quite do it for me. I can just cast the Forerunners. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but then this will be tapped, so that's not good enough. Can cast Iluna and then mutate the Parcel Beast onto it. And that's guaranteed to hit another permanence. And then next turn, I can play for a nurse, I guess it's fine. That's a pretty good one to hit. Alright, hopefully they don't have another Banishing Light. No attacks from our opponents. And uh, I guess we just cast Forerunners and Smash. Can even still use uh, the Iluna slash Parcel Beasts. Singer, yep. It's gonna shrink down a Forerunners. Another Singer, alright. Gotta be careful here. So probably not gonna tap the Iluna unless we can force them to chump. Their Devotion's four. So that chumps. 
opponent scheduled to take 13, so they have to block with the singer 2 here. So they double block there. So now I could afford to potentially activate Iluna on the way out, since I'm only scheduled to take 3 from the singer next turn. Although I don't know if they have some sort of pump spell that could interact. Because one pump spell I can think of they might have is the Aegis, which would uh, tap down Iluna anyway, so keeping it back as a blocker wouldn't be too useful. Alright, looks like we got there. That was a close one. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, a reasonable hand. Turn to Druid, turn 3 Umori, turn for Mutate Starix, hopefully. Opponent not playing any companions, so not sure what we're up against. Temple Garden, Leafkin Druids. And a Risen Reef, so some sort of banned elementals deck. Thanks to the castle, I can already mutate Sterix which seems worthwhile here. We always want to mutate in our first main phase in case we hit a Forerunners, so we can attack with it right away. And I mean, next turn we can just hard cast this, which should be pretty decent too. So this might be a banned Thassa deck with a bunch of ETB creatures like Knight of Autumn. And maybe Deputy of Detention. And of course at the top end, Agent of Treachery would make a lot of sense too. So yeah, I can just hard cast the Forerunners. Is that what I want to be doing here? I think so. Got 25 trample damage coming in, and our opponent only has 8 toughness, so that should put them dead here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. We're on the play, facing an unknown opponent with a pretty good hand. Grazer into double Great Horn and Sterix. Let's see what we're up against. Planes into Alsade. Maybe a green-white enchantment deck. Do we want forest or mountain? I'll go with mountain. And yep, Envoy confirms the suspicion of an Aura deck. So I can cast the Sterix and then mutate Greathorn onto it next turn, but I think I would rather just keep going on to the same creature, especially given that my opponent's unlikely to play a bunch of removal. So we'll just play Umori this turn then. And then next turn I can potentially mutate both.
All the glitters, so we're taking six in the skies. Great horn does have reach thanks to the Gracer, so can always keep it back. Alright, there's Castle. And of course, Asterix putting lands into play untapped means we can still uh, mutate here. Always want to fetch lands before using the Asterix's ability, so we thin out the deck a little bit. Alright, so... Don't have any good attacks. Don't have any mutate creatures left in hand, so could still easily lose this, despite our pretty good start. Second all the glitters, yeah, that'll do it. So I can jump if they have a Karmatra's Blessing, I'm dead. So I guess I'll just take 12 then and hope to somehow win the game next turn. All right, that gives me a shot. I will go under again because of the legendary rule. Don't have a lot of lands left in the deck. There's a forerunner. And our opponent concedes, all right, sweet. Well, we were very close to that, but uh, Iluna saves the day. On to the next one. We're on the play, facing a Lurus deck with a fine opening hand. No Iluna or Starix yet, but we've got Parcel Beast and Symbiote to draw. Can go for a turn to Greathorn. Facing the cycling deck. Or we can play Symbiote first and wait a turn on mutating stuff. I don't mind mutating Great Horn right now. Get my mountain. And then we'll stay back, because that way we get to hold off the fox. Don't really want to race the cycling deck, since hopefully we've got a better late game. But it did allow them to just play Rescuer this turn instead. Did find Iluna, that's nice. So this turn I can go Umori into Symbiote. And then next turn start mutating. And then uh, do I attack with the Great Horn? Probably. Wouldn't mind trading for both of their creatures. So now I can mutate for a mere 4 mana. Do I want another Symbiote or Parcel Beast? So I'll hang on to all the Parcel Beasts. And then get another Island. We hit Iluna, which is a little awkward here, given the Legendary rule. So we want to just put it in our hands. So we can mutate it as opposed to actually putting it in play. And then probably send for six. And then next turn I can double Parcel Beasts. Don't 
the ways your opponent has of killing a Luna include Zenith Flare and a Go for Blood if their Fox is big enough. So don't have to worry about it this turn at least. I'll take the damage. Ooh, Sterix, that's gonna be what we wanna start with. And then we'll put this over, that way if I put another Iluna in play, it doesn't die to the legendary rule. And then I guess we'll put this in play, sure. I guess keeping it in hand to loot away with Symbiote is also reasonable here. There's our fur runner. And we'll see what happens if we attack with everyone. Can also still use the Sterix slash Parcel Beasts. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So managed to beat another cycling deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand seems quite good. Facing another Lurus deck. Overgrown Tomb, alright, so at least it's not a cycling deck. Junt Lurus with a Paradise Root. I'm intrigued. So they could easily have a bunch of removal, so I like keeping the Paradise Root untapped. So we'll just mutate the Great Horn for now, I think. Rubble reading my islands. Okay, <laughs> put it on the land destruction plan. Can't say I've seen that one before. Well, good thing we still have an island in hand. Yeah, land destruction against the Great Horn's not gonna work out great for them. So end of turn I can use the Great Horn if they're tapped out, aka the Parcel Beasts. Not a rubble reading, okay. Opponent's trying. So, I guess if I want to mutate Iluna, I'll have to tap the Paradise Root, which is a little risky. Could also just play Omori and activate Great Horn, maybe that's better. And then next turn we'll uh, mutate Iluna first. Let's 
So this may be a casualties of war to continue the land destruction theme. Yep, <laughs> it sure is. Alright, so now I can mutate Iluna without having to tap my Paradise Roots, so let's do that. Still stay back. This looks like another casualties incoming. Well, our opponent has successfully destroyed four of our lands, and you barely notice it. Alright, Vigilance means we can now attack. And our opponent concedes. Alright, that was an interesting game to say the least. Glad our opponent's trying something new. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yorion deck. This could be a tough matchup, the combination of Sweepers and uh, Agent of Treachery stealing our big mutate creature. Although we do have Paradise Druid, which definitely helps against the Agents part of their deck. It's just the uh, Shatter the Sky part that's kind of tough. But they appear to be on a Teamer variant. Well, I've got Ilunas for days. Opponent's got five lands in play, two are one lands. Welcome to standard. Cavaliers, so this is the Teamer Elemental version. Well, they could just hardcast Agent next turn if they have one in hand, but probably still gonna play Omori here. Take five. All right. The fact that they're playing Yorion now is kind of a good sign, because it means they don't have more creatures in hand with ETB effects. And Race Forerunners also going to the graveyards. So if the Cavalier ever dies, they can get back some good cards. What do I want to do? So I could mutate Iluna, but that means either putting it on a Tap Druid or putting it on Umori. Or I can just cast Iluna, which I guess is also somewhat reasonable. Yeah, I might just cast Iluna. And that can hold off Yorion and maybe Cavalier. Bonus cries on upkeep. Alright, Iluna doing a good job on defense. Now, what do we want to do next? Can mutate Greathorn onto Iluna, or I can mutate Iluna onto the Paradise Druid, so we have a Hexproof blocker. 
and then keep mutating on the hexproof stack instead of somewhere else in case they find something to interact with my creature. I don't hate that idea. Uh, what do I do with this Iluna? Do I want to attack and have them potentially get back a card with Cavalier? It's a little risky. Never mind. I don't have double blue to mutate Iluna, so we'd have to tap Paradise Root anyway. So in that case, I guess we'll just keep going on the original Iluna. Right, that's a good hit. So... I guess both Umori and Forerunners can attack. And right, opponent packs it in. I don't think I wanted to attack with Iluna there, because they could double block and take it out. So, probably just sending Umori and uh, Forerunners there. But then next turn we had a couple more mutate creatures coming up. Alright, sweet. So overall, our uh, Teamer Mutate deck did quite well, but we also didn't face any sweeper-heavy decks like the Jeskai Yorion decks, which feature both the Agent of Treachery to steal our big Mutate creature if we don't have everything onto a Paradise Druid, or the uh, Shatter the Sky, which is also pretty back-breaking, so those are kind of the cards we don't want to be facing with this deck, which means that the now most popular deck in standards being the Jeskai, Yorion deck is probably a pretty bad matchup. So overall, maybe not the best position deck if you're looking at more competitive standard, but definitely a lot of fun in more casual environments and against uh, non-tier 1 standard decks. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.